What I love about fried rice is, is that it's kind of like a lazy man way of eating because mm -hmm. there's no fighting with your food. Yeah. It's just spoon, shovel. <laughs> <laughs> So Dale Taldi of Pork Slope in Park Slope, Brooklyn, let's talk drunk food. Let's do it. You know, when you're in the restaurant industry, you're kind of the life of the party. You're celebrating a lot of things. People are coming to you hopefully happy. So oftentimes you get carried away a little bit, have one too many, and the next day you gotta fix yourself up with something that soaks up all the poison. But also sometimes like you've just been cooking all day so you want something kind of quick and that's how this kind of developed, yeah. right? My wife Agnes, she's Korean. When we first started dating in the morning would make kimchi bokumbap, which is kimchi fried rice and then she would use whatever was in the fridge and I, as I watched her make it, I was like, well, it's just fried rice and you know, the basis of it is kimchi. So I started to kind of make my own and I wanted to do our own little twist on that with bacon. How do you start off with a good so, fried rice here? Yeah, so for me, it starts off with really good bacon into a really hot pan. Mm -hmm. A little bit of oil, kind of speed the process up. This fried rice takes a certain amount of oil. Mm -hmm. It just does. And some of that oil you're gonna use just rendering out that bacon fat is gonna get Yeah, it's gonna come out and you're gonna use a little of this fat to help this along. We add a little bit of butter to kind of help this process go along. More fat. Who cares? <laughs> Garlic, ginger. So just fresh grated ginger there? Yeah, scallions. It's kind of the foundation of a lot of stir fries and fried rices are just the aromatics. So it's instead of the mirepoix and like French cooking, this Correct. is like, like a different way to start it. Exactly, exactly. And we just kind of let the saute and cook down, let the bacon get crispy and fat. I love when the, you know the bacon fat and those vegetables kind of mix together. Mm -hmm. Even just talk about that flavor profile, it's something I feel like more people are eating way more than just like European cooking, breaking sure. away from that. It is, this base. is like the foundation of a lot of Asian cooking. You know, <laughs> garlic, ginger, scallion, it's all these aromatics that are a little bit different than your normal you know, onions, celery, ginger. Oftentimes, a lot of Asian cuisine will start with these ingredients. Chili sometimes if you want it spicy. And our, our chili here will be the addition of the kimchi. Okay. Do you guys ferment your own kimchi here? Or? We do at our other restaurant, Tali, but here mm -hmm. we just buy our, uh, a really good quality. That's a great thing about kimchi is that it's not one of those like artisanal products that's just really hard to find. You can find it kind of anywhere, you know? And then it can just hang out in your fridge, you can always just throw it's, it in. To be honest with you, it's already kind of spoiled. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fermented, so it's already kind of gone bad. And with kimchi, what I learned is that the riper it is, the mm -hmm. more it ferments, the better it is for cooking. Yeah, um, they stop eating it as a kind of a condiment, they cook with it, so. Something my wife always taught me is to uh, cook out the kimchi, which I didn't know, but it adds to this funky element that it already kind of has. So when you cook out, you know, fermented things, um, it really transforms them. So about how hot do you have the oven once you throw in the kimchi? I dropped it down for our purposes, but usually if I'm at home, this is all kind of like ripping, a, yeah, hot. ripping hot, kind of one really quick, fast process. And now at this stage, what I do is add a little bit more oil, and to the side, if you notice with the pan here, I push all the ingredients to one side and I'll add some beaten eggs to this side. And I'll scramble the egg just on one side. Are you just like looking for it to be still a little bit soft when you finally add the rice on? Mm -hmm. I, want, I like when it's ribbons of egg. Okay. You know, and as, as opposed to just kind of like little shards of egg that you can't see. And now I'll add the rice. And I'll season with a little bit of sesame oil, really important right here. You can see why you'd want to cook this like at the end of the night when you get home, because it just comes together super fast. Super fast, yeah. Just grab what's in your fridge. And you can straight up eat it out of the pan. <laughs> now we're just gonna really toast this up. Almost let this kind of crisp on the bottom, because mm -hmm. that's kind of the best part of kimchi. Almost like a paella. Thing. Yeah, when you get that soaker out in the bottom of a pan. What kind of rice are you actually using there? Stale for the jasmine rice. Okay. You can use any if you use a shorter grain rice. Just make sure it's dry and day old. Day old's okay. the best. Moist rice or, or just made rice won't soak up the flavor as well as uh, day old rice. So we just let this kind of cook. You can see kind of like, you see how it's sticking to the pan on the bottom there? Yeah. That's gonna, those are gonna be the, the best parts of, of Those little of this. like fried bits, cause yeah. it's just like the fat is just getting nice and crispy there. Yeah. Is there anything you see people like screwing up when they're like making a fried rice or? The most important thing with fried rice is, is that before you start cooking, that everything is in this stage. It's just so fast. It's just so fast. You know, you want your pan ripping hot. Everything has to be minced and diced and cut up. You know, the prep work sucks. Mm -hmm. The actual cooking of it is really fast and easy. That's great. I didn't have to do any prep work, so this is great for me. So it's really easy for you. <laughs> so this is all done. Fix you a plate. And there you go, bud. I got you a fork, too. I'm going to eat straight out the pan. Right out the pan? Just like home. <laughs> Your so, wife Just like I'm shit-facing at home. <laughs> Like what I love about fried rice is could, you could put anything in there. Yeah. If you had extra bean sprouts or if you had extra, you know, breakfast sausage right into it. You get that awesome crisp from the bottom. Mm -hmm. The ginger's not overpowering. It's all pretty mellow and in balance with each other. 
And the kimchi, you're not getting a ton of funk off of it. No. The best part is, is when you wake up eight, like five hours later and you're stumbling to the refrigerator and you mm -hmm. go get a Gatorade, this will still be on the stove. And you can just kind of shovel a couple of spoons and go right back to bed. And you've kind of had breakfast already. To me, this is just like, ah, done. <laughs> An interest to it. So you see how the butter is nicely incorporated? Yeah. I'm gonna add some cinnamon and salt. Get that sprinkled in there. You're such a good sprinkler. I'll quit my day job.